It takes some care to enjoy the wilderness without risking lives, as Aaron Bishop discovered when he and 16-year-old Kerry Baker set out into the mountains above Issaquah, Washington, on February 26, 1994. My daughter, Kerry, explained to us that she was going to go hiking with her friend Aaron up to Tiger Mountain. It's not raining too hard. It's a good day. In some places, it's pretty rugged, but it, it's marked trails. Where do you want to go? Next day. Do you want to head up this way? <laughs> yeah. You know? We had decided to go and look off some of the scenery that we couldn't get to. We kind of went trailblazing a little bit. Yeah. We had gone a ways off the trail. We can find it. It was a little more dangerous, but a really beautiful area. I uh, had never been there before. I know. We should have been all day. It was getting kind of late in the day, and it was time for us to start heading back down. We knew if we followed the stream down, we'd eventually cross the trail. Carrie, hang on. Be careful. You couldn't just stand up where we were. And we had to hang on to keep from sliding down the hill. Better look out, it's pretty slippery. Hang on. Kerry had fallen between 150 and 200 feet. Kerry! It's a terrible thought to think, you know, when your, your friends died just right out of your reach. I didn't really expect her to be conscious, but she was. It was hard for me to keep control and to keep calm. She had a big gash on her forehead. It was bleeding pretty heavily and her back hurt. Hang on! She told me the best thing for me to do would be to go down and call for help. I'll be back. The most frightening thing was not knowing if she would be all right by herself. Hearing Aaron's cries for help, hikers Alex Goins and Matt Iverson managed to find Carrie. It's extremely scary to see a, a person with that serious of a cut. Hey, are you all right? It was just incredibly gory. It is the sight that I will take with me for the rest of my days. Okay, what happened? I could see her skull. I didn't want to freak out because I didn't want her to know what she looked like. I didn't want to scare her any more than she was. Okay. I knew if that hypothermia and shock were going to set in extremely quick from her sitting in the water, I said, Carrie, if we move you, we run the risk of paralyzing you, maybe, because I don't know the extent of your injuries. What do you want? And at that, she looked at me, and she said, I want you to move me. I remember from one of the first day classes that I had that if nothing else was available, you could take sticks and put them down the center of her shirt and make a stretcher that way. And this way, when moving Carrie, it would support her. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, on the count of three, we're gonna... I was petrified. I was so scared. My knees were shaking. Okay. On the count of three, are you ready? Right before we moved One, her, two. I said a prayer to God. I said, God, grant me strength to, to move her and not to slip, and that I don't do any further damage. Carrie's friend Aaron found a hiker with a cellular phone. Rescue units were immediately dispatched to the scene. While Alex stayed with Carrie, Matt went for help. I was really scared for her. I've never been in a life and death situation, and I figured she could die any minute. 
I've never seen pain like that in anybody's eyes before. Show me where she is. Great. Ron Joins, a doctor, happened to be hiking in the area. I had an immediate concern that she may have a very severe brain or spinal cord injury. Okay. Okay, you guys, I need a, if you can give me some rocks. What we did was take a couple of rocks and wrap them in clothing and put them on either side of her neck to stabilize her neck. I'm going to need both of your help here. Okay. It was a very real possibility that she could die uh, out there on the side of this mountain. You can set this rock. We had a real race against time. Aaron led rescuers, including King County EMT Kevin Jones, to the scene. It took nearly an hour to hike in. Falling 200 feet, the human body doesn't hold up very well to that. 200 feet. She sustained a very severe head laceration. It was a 70 degree angle to tumble. It's probably worse than being in a car accident. We needed to get her out of there and now. As soon as Carrie's parents, Ken and Suzanne Baker, were notified of the accident, they came to the trailhead. We didn't know we were going to see her alive or not. Hi, I'm Kevin Taylor from the fire department. I'm the incident commander here. Here's what we're dealing with. Your daughter so many thoughts of her growing up and her being my little girl went through my head. Being a matter of minutes. All I wanted to do was uh, be at her side and hold her hand and not lose her. I didn't want her to, to pass on without saying the things that I want to say to her. She's about two miles up this trail. And we saw the helicopter circle the woods looking for her, which was an eerie feeling. So we had a lot of ifs. And we were scared. You find it's a claw rescue. Evac 37 is in your location right now, and we are currently searching for you. Sergeant Craig Davidson was one of the medics on board the U.S. Army helicopter. It was severely overcast that day. We had very little fuel left on board the aircraft. We were running out of daylight. It just made it real difficult to look down through the trees and locate anybody. The people on scene told us that they had built a signal fire. That at the 12 o'clock position off the nose of the aircraft it was the fire. We were looking for a spot to lower me through the trees. This rescue was by far the most serious I've ever been involved in personally. Very hairy. We could not lift Carrie from where she was laying, so the only open area was the eight-foot entrance hole above the treetops that I came through 50 yards down below. How long ago were her last call signs taken? About uh, five minutes. Five yeah. minutes ago. Like that. And that was our only option. We, we needed to move Carrie down, and we, and we needed to do it quickly. As we were watching, right before she went in the helicopter, we saw her hit the helicopter. our breath. And they finally got her in and we we're like, oh, just let out a sigh of relief. Three hours and 15 minutes after her fall, 16-year-old Carrie Baker arrived at Harborview Medical Center in Seattle. X-ray. X-ray clear. She was examined by resident orthopedic doctor Muhammad Diaz. This is Carrie. Carrie took a fall off a cliff today. Where I tested her sensation. There was some numbness in her thigh. No, I can't feel that. Trauma? She has sustained a terrible injury to her spine. She had broken two vertebrae, and the bone fragments had shattered and exploded into the spinal canal. She needs surgery immediately. They told us the problems that could arise during surgery. It's a very delicate surgery. To do this, it could paralyze her. The doctors talked to you about the surgery. Yeah. There's a chance that 
you might not walk. Ken and I could hardly breathe. We love you. I love you too. We love you so much. And then they took her. Carrie was in surgery for 12 hours. A team of doctors realigned her spine, removed bone fragments from her spinal canal, and inserted metal rods into her back to stabilize it. The legs, they were numb. We waited days before we'd know if she'd walk or not. Then they said she can feel, and they said it looks good. It looks real good. Square up a little on the left. Carrie underwent eight months of intense rehabilitation. I remember looking down at my feet, thinking, okay, move, you know, and they didn't move. A few more steps. I never thought that taking a little inch of a step would hurt so much. But I was just so glad that I could do this. Fight. A year after her fall, Carrie's recovery has been remarkable. I feel thank you is not a strong enough word to represent how much I appreciate every single person that was a part of the rescue and a part of the whole entire recovery that I went through. I just appreciate every single one of you with all my heart. I love her like a sister. It's just unbelievable what the two of us have developed together. I've gotten a friend that is closer than some of the people I've known for years and years. You just kind of stuff too? <laughs> when people go hiking, they should have some first aid training. And they should stay on the trail. We should never have gone to any place where our safety was in question. We should have been a lot more careful where we were. Okay. <laughs> the thought that I could have lost my daughter just makes me realize how much I do love her that I can't do without her uh, I look forward to the years to come so, you hold my hand. <laughs> I feel like I have a purpose and reason to be on the earth and I feel like it's to show other people that life is such a wonderful thing I wanted to make a difference in other people's lives as much as they've made a difference in mine <laughs>